Hey gang, today we are taking a look at the last two TFC Hercules figures, Neckbreaker and Mad Blender. As you can see, Mad Blender is the cement mixer of the group. He is a pretty good looking cement mixer, and the drum actually does spin. Very nice touch. Neckbreaker is the bulldozer, and the bulldozer I think is a little bit out of proportion with some of the other figures, but it's not bad. It does have a working blade that can move up and down, though it does have a tendency to pop apart quite a bit. My only complaint about the neckbreaker is the giant hand sticking off the back, but that you just easily pop off and leave off to the side. And that was my cat. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the transformations. The transformation for neckbreaker is actually very complex. We'll start off by splitting the blade apart and then folding down the legs and flipping the hips around. Then split the engine compartment apart, open it up, and then flip those areas all the way around the figure. Then just straighten out the legs and take the blade components and actually fold them over what are the hips. Finally flip out the hands and take the front of the blade and that becomes the chest piece. And we are good to go. Of all the Hercules figures, I have to say that Neckbreaker is probably my least favorite, and the simple reason is because I really don't care for this robot mode. Now, a lot of folks out there do, and I can understand why, but this is just a robot mode that doesn't work for me for some reason. It is very authentic to the original G1 character of Bone Crusher, but I, I just don't dig it. I just don't care for it all that much. It's not bad. There's nothing actually wrong with it, though. That's the problem I have. There's actually nothing wrong with the robot mode. In fact, I love the vehicle mode, I love the transformation, but I just don't care for the robot mode. It just doesn't do anything for me. Posability-wise, his head is on a ball joint, so you get a lot of movement there. Arms are on a hinge joint in the shoulder, swivel joint here at the top of the shoulder, another swivel joint just above the elbow, 90 degree bend at the elbow, and then the fists, well, they really don't move. Hips, you can twist the hips, then there is a ball joint up here, a hinge joint at the knee, though you have to be careful as the part of the scoop, or the blade, is attached to the lower shin. And the feet, they really don't move, they're the exact same feet as X-Grabber, so they do have some posability in them. Like I said, it's not bad. It is not a bad figure. I just don't care for the aesthetic. Mad Blender's transformation is significantly easier and very similar to G1. You're going to have to remove the blender first, then fold out the legs, flip out the feet, fold up those wheels, flip the backpack down, and then the rear of the vehicle will become the arms, though the arms are, or I'm sorry, the hands are very tight in those, in those areas, so you might need something to pry them out. The other thing is a little bit weird is you actually have to manually pull the head up. Once you do that, you're pretty much done. Mad Blender's robot mode is very, very cool. I really like it a lot, and it just feels so G1 accurate. Now you'll notice that I don't have the blender attached right now. Now the blender can attach in this mode, though not nicely. There's really no other place to plug it in except for this one spot up here, and it just Cause the weight just causes it to fall off. Now in the transformation, I did forget to show you that this part will collapse down and then refold back up into the main body. Sorry about that. It does come with a few accessories, as you can see, the purple gun, the red clear gun, and the nice purple top up here. Very nice G1 homage right there. Now, the posability of this guy is pretty good. Head, unfortunately though, is not on a ball joint. It's on just a swivel. Swivel at the shoulder, swivel underneath the shoulder, 90 degree hinge, hips, ratcheting joint, hinge, reverse, kind of a reverse hinge at the knee, and then uh, this joint down here at the shin. Okay, so posability is pretty good on this guy. You can get some good poses. Poses. Now there's one thing. The drum. This comes apart. Not easily. See, 
it's supposed to just come apart, but mine does not want to come apart easily. In fact, it's going to take me a couple of minutes, so I'm going to cut away, and I'll be back with, uh, with um, some more toys for this guy. So I'm back, and I was able to get the drum apart, and what you end up with there are a hell of a lot more weapons. You end up with nine more guns. That's pretty cool. One thing I love about this figure is you can deploy all of these weapons on him. Now, you'll notice that there are several holes on the arms, on the legs, and then inside these. So what you'll do is actually turn these around and flip them around like this. So you'll just extend it, turn it around, and recollapse it. And then start attaching guns everywhere. When you absolutely positively have to clear every Autobot from the room, except zero substitutions. <laughs> Seriously, guys, this is nuts. It's great. I mean, he's got he's got shin cannons, arm cannons, shoulder cannons, and back cannons. And just as long as nobody walks up behind him, he's going to kill everyone in the room. Strike Freedom Gundam, eat your heart out. Now that we've taken a look at both the vehicle and the robot modes, let's go ahead and look at their combined modes. Starting with Mad Blender, we'll first take these little heels and leave them alone, actually. And what we're going to do is just fold the cab out so that it forms a foot. Now you'll notice that it looks like things are getting in the way, and they are. So what we have to do is take the barrel, unpeg it, spin it around, and then peg it back up top. And that just takes a little bit of getting things in alignment. And then we can take the cab and fold it out, and these pegs will peg into those holes. So we just gotta get everything lined up. And the last thing is take these little purple parts on the back of what are the robot's legs and fold them out. And here we've got a leg! Neckbreaker is just a little bit more complicated. To start, we'll take apart the blade, and then take the legs and fold them out, and flip this around. Then fold the legs straight down. Take the middle part of the blade and fold it up like we're going to form it in robot mode, and collapse it over the engine compartment of the bulldozer. Then reach underneath the robot head, and fold out the connector point. And then remember X-Grabber all those months ago? Same exact thing. Fold up the treads and get the blades collapsed in like we're forming the robot mode again. And then all we do is combine them up and we will put the hand right there. And here we go. Now well, the one thing I didn't do was I was kind of being stupid and I forgot the blades go in the back of the arm. So uh, this is the hand mode. It has taken well over a year to get all of these components, but we finally have all six not Constructicons. So today I'm going to get them to combine and we are going to get ourselves some not Devastator and there you are. I've been looking for you idiot Constructicons for days. What are you doing? Slither off to where you came from, Starscream. We're busy. Yeah, things to do. Giant robots to combine into. Yes, yeah, Starscream, I do agree. You should leave us be. Well, if you must know, Lord Megatron wants to invade an Autobot shuttle and then attack Autobot City on Earth. But I'll just tell him that you're not interested. Why didn't you say so? Come on, gang. We got some... Brain cases to clobber! Excellent, we depart in five minutes. Hey, where, where are you guys get struck? Where are you going? We, we've got a combination sequence to film. Get, come on, guys, you can't do this to me. Hey, where are you go? God damn it! Well, great. Thanks a lot, Starscream. Now I have no not Constructicons. Ugh. Oh well, um, I guess I'll catch you guys next time.